What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full recap for you of Google's just wrapped Google Music event. We've got a ton of stuff to talk about. If you didn't join us at the live event, we're going to talk about streaming options, mobile applications, opportunities for independent music producers, and a ton more. So if you like taking your music with you anywhere you go, stick around. All right, so first, if you see me glance down and glance back up, it's not because I'm checking you out, although you do look pretty darn good. It's because the event just ended and I got some notes in front of me and I have to read them. So if you simply do this, that is why. All right, so Google Music Beta, which is what it was previously called, is now out of beta and is officially called, wait for it, Google Music. Not the most creative name, but that is what it's going to be called and it's a pretty awesome a system that Google has given us. It is completely cloud-based and is now available free for everyone if you're in the US. Uh, if you're outside the US, unfortunately, there haven't been plans announced for that. Uh, you can store and stream up to 20,000 of your own songs. Uh, if you have more than 20,000, you're going to be cut off right there. Uh, Google has not announced an option for what they're going to do for folks with uh, music libraries that exceed 20,000. But you can now upload and stream 20,000 songs that you've got to any browser or Android device. We'll talk about that in just a minute. There is one little bit of desktop software. This isn't completely... Uh, web-based. It's going to be called Music Manager and what that's going to do is help you upload your music from your computer to the server uh, including iTunes. So if you got an iTunes library that is presumably DRM free you can go ahead and upload all that music and be good to go. All you got to do is sign in with your Google account and you'll be able to access all of your music. If you're on an Android device for example you sign in with your Google account and all of your music is going to immediately be there. But John, you're asking, what if I'm on an airplane and I don't have a data connection and I want to listen to the Bee Gees? Uh, if, let's say you're older and you like the Bee Gees. Uh, let's give a younger example. I want to listen to the Twilight soundtrack, hypothetically. Uh, well, what you can do is you can actually pin that content uh, to your mobile device and it'll be available offline. So if you don't have a data connection, not to worry, you can pin the songs you want to listen to and you can listen to them uh, when you are rocking it in airplane mode. Uh, the music is now going to be available on Android Market. So in addition to offering uh, apps, obviously movies and books, uh, music is now going to be available on there as well. It'll start rolling out to Android devices over the next you know, two or three days. Sometime this week, uh, you should probably start to see it. So if you go over to music.google.com, you can also check out all the songs that are going to be available and you can download them you know, right from your browser. Uh, you're going to get 90 second previews and if you decide to download, they're going to be in 300 kilobit per second uh, quality. I think that's how you say it. Uh, so they should be relatively uh, decent quality. Uh, they're going to be offering a free song of the day every day. So you should at least by the end of the year have 365 songs uh, in your library and they'll change and feature different artists that the Google staff recommends. Uh, what's kind of funny that they were using OS 10 in the demo and not Chrome OS. Uh, there is going to be something really cool though with Google Plus. Uh, you can share your purchased songs with your friends, allowing them one free play of all your music. So if you download something fun, your friends can listen to it um, at least one time. Uh, which is going to make you pretty popular or going to make you want to join the circles of folks that are buying a lot of music. It's kind of a neat option. Um, and again, there isn't really a desktop app. There's just that music manager. So you're not going to have sort of an iTunes equivalent chilling in your, your applications folder. Um, it's mostly going to be based on the web. Uh, they've partnered with Universal, EMI, and Sony. Those are the big partners. And they've got a ton of independent music uh, labels on there as well from the folks at Merlin. Uh, they're going to have 8 million songs available today, 13 million total over the coming months. Uh, exclusive content uh, is going to be available on Google Music from artists like the Rolling Stones. I believe they have one of their 1973 concerts uh, on there. Uh, Coldplay, Shakira, Pearl Jam, Dave Matthews, and Busta Rhymes, who's actually in attendance. Uh, one of the other cool things that they announced is something called the Artist Hub. That's a place where independent artists can post their music for sale uh, on Google Music and set their own prices. Uh, the artists will keep 70% of the monies that they make. 
allowed to pay a one-time fee of 25 bucks. Uh, and they're working with YouTube to allow the artists to directly sell their music uh, from YouTube from their official you know, music videos. Uh, this is a really cool idea. Essentially, it's like a blog for music producers. Uh, it's letting people auto-publish, auto-distribute their own content. Now, certainly Google's taking a piece of it. Um, but it's a great way for independent uh, music producers to be able to get their music out there uh, in a way for maybe people that might see it uh, a bit more often. I think this is going to be one of the killer features, actually, of Google Music. And I think it's going to have a huge widespread adoption amongst the growing uh, independent music movement. So if you're into indie music or you're indie music producer, this is probably going to be sweet indie music uh, to your ears. Uh, and much like Google partnered with T-Mobile to launch Android into the world, the original G1, they are partnering with T-Mobile again here for Google Music. Uh, you're going to be able, if you're a T-Mobile customer rather, you're going to be able to use your T-Mobile account uh, to buy music and they'll charge it right to your phone bill. And you're going to have exclusive content just for T-Mobile customers. Uh, presumably this will be coming to other carriers as well. If the AT&T T-Mobile merger goes through, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but presumably that will transfer over as well. But if you're on T-Mobile, that is good news for you because T-Mobile loves them some Android. Since they don't have iOS to diversify their portfolio, they are all about the little green guy. This guy right here on T-Mobile is showing this guy some love. Like that. They're making out with them. Maybe they use a little tongue. I'm not sure. But they're showing the green guy some love. So this has been a sort of a quick recap of Google Music. There's a lot to like about it. Uh, and there's a lot to di digest uh, about it. Essentially, it takes all our music online. Think of it like iTunes Match, but essentially for free. Uh, I don't presume most people are going to have over 20,000 songs, although I will say out of the Techno Buffalo staff, two people right off the bat said, I have more than 20,000 songs. They were greeted with a pop-up that said they could only upload 20,000. Uh, so that's a bit of a detriment. You can't buy more space. But for those of us that don't have 20,000 songs, this thing is free, and it's pretty incredible. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't heard anything about whether or not there's going to be support for other OSs, uh, iOS in particular, and Windows Phone 7. Uh, for right now, it's going to be rocking just on Android devices, but it's another incentive to go out and pick up an Android device, be able to access all of your goodness from anywhere that you are. So what do you think about Google Music? Are you excited? Not excited? Do you care? Do you not care? Do you like my hair? Uh, are you wearing underwear? I can't think of anything else that rhymes. Uh, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check us out for all of your tech news, including unboxing, reviews, opinions, uh, and as you are now well aware, awful, awful jokes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.